Hey everyone, Logan here from the Spalty Dog. So today I'm going to be showing you how I built this 9 foot live edge dining table. If this is something you're interested in, stick around and I'll show you how I did it. I got this English elm slab online and had it shipped to me. After getting into the shop, I started opening up the crate to get my first look in person. The slab was pre-flattened and wrapped in plastic to help keep the moisture content stable during shipping, so I removed that as well. On the underside of the slab was a decent sized bark inclusion that needed to be addressed. So I went at it with a couple of chisels and a mallet, breaking away as much material as possible. This entire process was extremely satisfying, and I could do this for hours. To get into those harder to reach areas, I used a wire brush with my drill. This also helped smooth everything out. I sucked up the big pieces with my shop vac, then blew out the finer stuff with my air compressor. After that, I cleaned the area by wiping it down with mineral spirits. I really love how this looks on its own. It makes me think of a giant canyon or a valley in the desert. And while it looks really cool, we're going to fill it with epoxy to help stabilize everything. Since the inclusion runs off the edge of the slab, I needed to block off one side to keep the epoxy from leaking. To do this, I lined some thin cardboard with packing tape and held it in place with hot glue. I decided to use Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy to fill the inclusion. This epoxy has a longer cure time that allows you to make deeper pores while basically leaving zero air bubbles. I mixed up a few batches to fill most of the inclusion. Then I hit it with a heat gun to pop any air bubbles on the surface. While the epoxy cures, I start making C-channel supports for the top by measuring and cutting each piece. I decided to try this metal cutting disc over the abrasive type and was really impressed with how it held up. It cut through this 3 16th inch steel with no problem. Next, I took the supports over to the drill press to drill out elongated holes for mounting to the top. This gets most of the job done, however I had to go back with a carbide grinding bit to smooth out each hole. After the epoxy cured, I could remove the cardboard. Some epoxy got behind the hot glue and encased it, but I didn't worry too much because it's not something you'll see from the top. I flipped the slab over and filled a few voids on the top, following the same steps as earlier. While that epoxy cured, I started making the table base by measuring and cutting all my pieces from 1.5 inch tube steel. I needed to cap off a few pieces of the tube steel, so I traced out the ends of each tube on some 16 gauge steel. Next, I roughly cut out each piece using my angle grinder. After that, I marked a few tabs on some leftover 1 quarter inch steel bar and drilled out elongated holes on the drill press. With the holes drilled, I then cut each tab, first by scoring a shallow line, then coming back to complete the cut. Cutting these after drilling your holes makes it easier since you have a larger piece to hold steady at the drill press. Next, I switched over to an 80 grit flap disc to chamfer all my edges to prep for welding. I tack the caps to the appropriate pieces with the help of some right angle magnets keeping the tube upright. I then grind off the excess plate, tack weld the entire seam, then smooth it all out with a flap disc. After that, I start assembling four pieces into a rectangle that will make one end of the base. I go around and tack each joint, then check everything for square by measuring the diagonals. I then go back and run full beads on all the joints and grind them smooth with a flap disc, making sure not to heat up one area too much. Next, I begin spacing two stretchers that will run the length of the table. 
I center a spacer on the rectangle and use that to butt each stretcher up against. With the help of some right angle magnets, I can tack and weld each into place. After that, I added a few spacers between the stretchers to provide some rigidity to the base. I then welded a leg to the end of each stretcher. This will make up the other end of the base. Since the top is more narrow on one end, I designed this base to be asymmetrical to better flow with the overall shape. At this point, I could flip over the base and repeat the process by welding and grinding all of the joints on the top side. Next, I needed to weld the tabs to the base and remove all of the mill scale. Before painting, I mix and apply an automotive body filler to all the joints on the base. After about 30 minutes, I come back and sand everything smooth, then wipe the entire base down with denatured alcohol. I then start priming the base with a self-etching primer, followed up by wet sanding with 600 grit sandpaper, making sure to dry the base with a towel after. Finally, I spray on a few coats of a matte black enamel and the base is finished. With the base finished, I can move back over to the top. I sand everything up to 180 grit, water pop the grain, then finish up at 220 grit. Next, I need to inlay the C-channel on the underside of the top. These supports are meant to help keep the slab flat over time. I mark where I want each of them to go, clamp a straight edge, and use my router to route out the grooves for the walls. When routing, I plunge to my full depth at both ends of the groove. Then I make multiple shallow passes to connect the two holes. You could stop here, but I want the C-channel to be flush with the underside. So I set my router depth to the thickness of the C-channel and remove the area between the two grooves. I made the grooves about a half inch longer on both sides so there's room for the table to expand and contract without binding the C-channel. With my grooves cut, I sand the bottom of the table up to 220 grit, then start working on the edges. Now there was a spot where the slab was only about 3 quarters of an inch thick and I was worried about the stability so I decided to remove it. I drew a line attempting to follow the grain so it would appear more natural, then cut along my line with a jigsaw. After that, I sanded the area up to 220 grit. I also removed any hard edges from the cut to make it blend in more with the rest of the live edge. Next, I center the C-channel in their grooves and start drilling the mounting holes. You can mount the C-channel a few different ways. I decided to use hex bolts with threaded inserts. So here I'm mixing up and applying a 5 minute epoxy to the inserts and screwing them into the holes I drilled using an allen wrench. I wanted to seal the wood under the C-channel in some way, so I just threw on a quick coat of paste wax. This probably wasn't necessary, but it made me feel better knowing the whole table was sealed. I needed to trim off about 6 inches from one end of the slab because of a small crack. So I measured and marked in from a few spots, then connected them using a straight edge. Then I just followed along that line with my circular saw. The saw blade left a few burn marks, so I sanded those away and smoothed over the newly cut edges, then wiped down the underside with mineral spirits to remove any dust. While the mineral spirits dried, I started attaching the C-channel using my driver. I tightened down the center bolt almost completely while only snugging up the ends. I decided to try Rubio Monocoat for finishing this top, and I have to say, I love the simplicity of this product. You apply a single coat, let it sit for a few minutes, then buff away the excess. They recommend only sanding up to around 120 grit because of how it bonds with the wood. However, I saw others sand to 220 with no issues, so that's what I tried. Unfortunately, it just didn't seem to bond evenly and I think the figured grain on this English elm made it worse. I ended up sanding back down to 120 and refinishing which turned out much better. 
Finally, I attach the top to the base using a few screws and washers through the mounting tabs to allow for wood movement. There it is, a 9 foot live edge dining table with a steel base that comfortably seats 8 people. This was one of my biggest builds to date and was definitely challenging in my small shop. However, I'm extremely happy with how everything turned out and it goes to show that just because you have a small shop doesn't mean you can't go big on your projects. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap this one up. To stay up to date on future projects, make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you again for watching and I hope to catch you on the next one.